Well, hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter, here with another video for World Watercolor Month, strip coloring. I'm calling this strip coloring because it's Shark Week, and I wanted to have a second Shark Week card since I have another shark stamp set. It's called Oceans of Love, I believe, by Heffy Doodle. And the, the reason I'm calling it strip coloring is that when I'm coloring in colored pencil, and I know this says watercoloring, in the title of it, but I am coloring water sometimes this month. Hopefully that's okay, because I'm not doing watercolor all month long here on YouTube. But I'm calling it strip coloring because I've drawn a strip, I've drawn a rectangle. The one image that's popping out of the rectangle is the shark, because the some I've got something to say sentiment kind of plays off of him. But the rest of them are masked into that rectangle. And I did that just with post-it notes around the edges of the, the rectangle that I drew before stamping all the other creatures in there. As for the coloring, what I'm doing is using my polychromos pencils. And I'm doing a couple layers here on my shark. I put a gray all over underneath. And now I'm adding those water reflections on top of them, and I'll do that onto each of the other images as well, because that gives you a real underwater kind of look. If you're somebody who's taken the Copic underwater class, there's underwater scenes. I talk in that quite a bit about how to create more of that underwater look, but it's just on the top of an image that you put those kind of little water, water ripple type things. And then underneath, there wouldn't be any of that because the those water reflections from the sky don't shine down onto the bottom of an, of an image or a fish, just onto the top of it. So I've got my shark in there and I'm going to move on to doing all my other critters. Each one of them will have the same kind of lines across them. And these little guys, I was looking up the colors for rays, and they kind of have a bluish tint to them. So I put some blue down first, and then some brown, and then I'll do some gray to get the, the little ripply look on top of them. And so I thought that would be a fun color combination to play with for these guys. And that's one thing I do recommend when you're doing any of your coloring that you want to uh, make it look realistic then go look up something on the webbies because the internet has just tons and tons and tons of resources. If you don't know what color something is, you can make it a playful color and have them all be super bright, happy colors. But if you want to make them realistic colors, just go to the web and sometimes take a piece of scratch paper and practice what different colors layered together will look like and will they make it look like a, the kind of thing that you're looking for. Now jellies are a little weird because they're mostly white with just a tint of blue, a little bit of that. And I'm adding just a little bit of shading underneath each one and down that middle piece, whatever thingy, that the fat part that hangs down from their body, just to make sure that that looks like it's underneath each of the jellies. There's also a cute uh, jelly sentiment in the stamp set as well. And then I thought I'd add some of this kind of brighter blue-greenish kind of color over top of the colors that I already had down there. And when I put it over top of that black that I put on the, the shaded parts, it just brightens that up just a little bit and helps to make it not look like it's all super black or anything like that. So I've got all of those little guys and all I have left is my two turtles. And the two turtles I'm going to do in two colors. Again, putting some of that shading with the darker color to create those little ripples on top of him. I did that a little bit with the jellies. You can just barely see it, but the jellies are so white, it's hard to show any of that kind of detail on them. But it works really well when you've got contrasting colors. And I like to put the main color of the object down there. You don't usually end up getting absolute whites when you're looking at something underwater because absolute whites would be like way out in the sunshine. So even a white object has a definite tint of color. So now for the reason why I did that strip coloring bit and even called it strip coloring, because it takes a long time to do a background like this. The images themselves take a while, but the background just seems to take forever. And especially with my technique of using lots of soft layers of color, and I want to have some color that's going to blend from the bottom all the way up to the top, it just takes a while. So this whole card took maybe an hour and a half to color. So that's why it is sped up like mad because 
we'd be here all day long. But I'm using a series of blues, and the, the very bottom blue here is almost completely blackish. Uh, but it's got a bunch of blue content in it. It's a dark indigo kind of color. And then I just let it get lighter as it went up. And now I'm going in with my next blue. And I'm going over the areas where I was lightening up that darkest color. And then as I move up in the gradation, it's going to get darker and darker with this color. Until then, in the next section, it's going to get lighter. And I'll let it get pale and fade out into the next color. And I just keep going. You could do a full rainbow of something this way as well, but it also works to make a gradation of these colors going all the way up the entire strip panel of the card. But the reason for just doing a strip of it and com containing your stamping to one section is because you could be here for like five hours trying to do the entire card in a full background kind of way. But when you do something like this and you let the shark pop out or whatever the main image is. So if you want to use this stamp set and use the jellyfish, then let the jellyfishes, one of the jellyfishes heads pop out and put the sentiment next to the jellyfish. So that makes it seem like there's a reason for just having the strip of color without kind of having to color the whole thing, if that makes sense. So I'm going to work my way up toward now a more medium blue and just each time I'm layering over top of the lighter color below it, the, the one pre previous to it, so that I get a couple layers of color in the areas where they're blending with each other. And now I'm going to go in with that same light blue-green kind of color and start filling in the rest of the part at the top. So all the colors for this are listed over on my uh, my blog if you're looking for the color names and that sort of thing because I know lots of people like that but since I was going back and forth with the colors enough I did not put them on the screen so here's the finished card I ended up putting it on a popped panel I popped it and then I used the powder technique from the color pencil jumpstart class to do that panel on the right on the card base as well as the card base surrounding the insert so I put a little panel on the inside with the thank you for all your kelp words so there you go if you want to know what the powdered pencil technique is then head over to the color pencil jumpstart class and you too can learn how that works and i will see you guys later have a really awesome world watercolor month bye bye